Hey there, hope all is well. Back at you today with some more RTD News updates. And as you can see from my background, we're going to be talking about the debt ceiling and trying to put an actual visualization on how massive this debt is and the idea of reaching a debt ceiling in a couple days. So I have a couple articles here that I want to share with you of exactly four articles, but yet more importantly, I want to kind of share with you a visual aid that I found on the internet that's quite, um, you know, mind blowing. Just to think about the fact that, you know, what you see behind me are are crates of hundred dollar bills and the sign above my head says one trillion and so this is just a straight on view of how much one trillion actually what it actually looks like if you were to take it into paper form and hundred dollar bills and uh, lay it all out in front of you so uh, i want to dive into today's articles and just you know as always share my thoughts with you at the very end other than that you know just leave it up to you to uh first article here is from cnbc and it's actually from last month but it says remember the debt ceiling here it comes again uh, the next article here is from the Washington Examiner, and it's talking about Trump first 100 days. But then it talks about the idea that the debt limit could hit same day as the government funding runs out. So we're coming down to crunch time where, you know, our funds are low to, uh, you know, fund our operations here in this country. Next article here is from the Washington Examiner as well. And it says, Treasury Department burning through cash at debt ceiling approaches. More of that. And then this last one here is actually from Zero Hedge, and it's visualizing the U.S. debt ceiling in $100 bills. And so we're going to go through that and actually lay out some visualization of what, what it actually looks like to, to try to fathom $17, $19, 20000000000000 trillion. So uh, let's get into today's first. So we have the CNBC article. Uh, remember the debt ceiling? Here it comes again. And it kind of lays out a good timeline of what, what has happened over the last couple debt ceilings that uh, we've approached and what ha and how it actually ended as far as there being some stalemate type of things up until the last minute where they actually increased the debt ceiling as always because unfortunately the only way this e this entire you know system can stay afloat is if we continue to borrow being that we are a debtor nation so just give you an idea what's going on here I'll read a little bit but other than that leave it down below for you to read if you're interested so it says after a 15 month hiatus Congress is once again warming up to another round of self-inflicted budget crisis that have become all but standard operating procedure from the Treasury needs to raise the limits on its borrowing authority that's right the debt ceiling is back the budgetary bottleneck arrives again next month as I mentioned, this is from February, when the latest suspension of the uh, limits expires on March 15th. Back in October 2015, Congress decided to punt on the issue by suspending the debt ceiling with a hard end date. It says some budget watchers are already warning that another big budget battle could be looming. And then it just goes down a little bit further and gives you some ideas what, what has happened over the last couple debt ceilings. And it says in the summer of 2011, the budget negotiation between then President Barack Obama and Republicans in Congress went down to the wire with some members of Congress uh, threatening to force the Treasury to default on his debt for the first time in history. Despite an 11th hour deal, Standard & Poor was unimpressed. The credit agency, agency citing the bitter uh, budget uh, battle, docked Uncle Sam's AAA credit rating a notch. So let me pause right there. Uncle Sam's AAA credit rating. So we're talking about, you know, quote unquote, the greatest nation on the planet relying upon credit and supposing to have AAA credit at that, being that, there's no way in and there's no way possible to pay back 20 trillion dollars but yet to still have triple a credit credit you know it's that's yeah it's interesting so yeah it says in late 2012 congress once again uh, played another round of budgetary chicken when the december 31st expiration of budget uh, bush era tax cuts threatened to a collide with mandatory spending because it took effect the same day. A deal was reached and the compromise approved in the early hours of January 1st, 2013. So it says since then, the last two debt ceiling uh, deadlines have come and gone relatively peacefully with argued with agreements first in October 2013 and again two years later. Then here it shows a little graph, which is just, you know, once again, a, a visual aid that is quite alarming. It says self-inflicted crisis. And then it shows here just a timeline of the last three presidents and the amount of debt uh, incurred by each one of them to keep this thing afloat. And, you know, granted, you know, Obama being the largest, being that, you know, he kind of, you know, stepped right into a mess, but yet other than that approved uh, this large amounts of debt. So here's a little timeline of here from November 1995 says six days. There was a shutdown in December 1995 to 96. There's a 22 day shutdown. In 2011, S&P downgrades U.S. Treasury debt. January 1st, 2013 was a fiscal cliff, which looks like a, a huge spike 
in the uh, you know what was allowed to be spent for that time period. Then it says the debt sp suspended in 2013, and then here we are again, uh, March 15th coming up, where we are now at the peak of this debt ceiling, and it is now time to raise it or default or we'll see what they end up doing so interesting article if you want more about it just feel free to click down below next article from Washington Examiner and it says debt limit could hit same day as government funds runs out and so it says Congress may be faced with the uh, prospect of facing deadlines to raise the debt ceiling and fund the government at the same time in the fall uh, the same coincidence of events has set up a major fiscal standoff in past years. So basically, raise the debt ceiling or default or, you know, run out of money to keep the government up and running. So uh, the Bipartisan Policy Center, a nonpartisan think tank, reported Thursday that the pad date when Congress has to raise the debt ceiling pro uh, probably will fall in October, November with a particular danger related to uh, federal payments that fall on the first day of the new fiscal year, which is October 2nd. The first day of the new fiscal year is also likely to be a deadline for government funding. Scroll down a little bit more. It says here, the relevant deadline for the debt ceiling is not when the debt actually hits the debt ceiling. That will occur March 16th. Thanks to Congress previously suspending the limit, it's about $20 trillion. And so basically up until March 16th, $20 trillion will be the cap. Whoa. At that point, the Treasury can make use of extraordinary measures effectively moving federal government's accounts around to continue paying incoming obligations and interest and principal on the debt for several months. So we're just talking about raising a debt ceiling just to pay, as it says here, incoming obligations, interest, and principal on the debt. Never will a politician talk about how to pay off the debt. And to think that they all realize that the debt is a problem and there's no talk of ever paying it off is alarming in and of itself. So Running low on cash. We'll see how it all pans out. Next article here. Treasury Department uh, burning through cash as debt ceiling approaches. And so um, here we here we have some figures here. It says the Treasury Department has been rapidly spending its large cash reserves ever since President Trump, Trump took office over a move that complies with the federal law but could also make it harder for the government to stay under the debt ceiling once the limit kicks in again later this month. On January 20th, the day Trump took office, the federal government had $382 billion in cash on hand. $382 billion in cash on hand, and the debt ceiling is 19 point something trillion, approaching $20 trillion. And they have $382 billion in cash on hand. That's the equivalent of having a credit card that's maxed out, and you just have enough to basically touch your principal. If that, not to mean, not to mention, pay your bills, you know, you know your your daily living bills, but yet, just to show how crazy this is, I mean, these these numbers are, you know, through the roof. And so this visual aid that you're that's coming next will really lay it out visually what it looks like and how it's insane. It says spending all that cash has helped keep the total national debt under 20 trillion. The total debt has hovered around 19.9 trillion since the Trump took office and would easily exceed 20 trillion by now if the government borrowed money to fund government spending instead of using available cash. But staying under the uh, dubious milestone is probably not why all of the cash is going out the door. And then it lists here, examiner, keeping a low cash balance is required under a law that is pa that was passed back in 2015. So keeping a low cash balance is required under a law that was passed in 2015. It says the last debt ceiling legislation prohibited Treasury from increasing the cash balance above normal operating balances right before the debt ceiling return. So, yeah, they put a cap on how much money they can actually hold. Specifically, Congress passed legislation in late 2015 that suspended the debt ceiling through March 15, 2017. Until that date, the government can borrow whatever it needs to keep funding itself at levels approved by Congress. So starting March 16, the debt ceiling will be in effect again, and it will be whatever level of debt the government has racked up. So, Interesting. Whatever debt the government has racked up, never once is it mentioned about how it's going to be re be repaid. So, but this just to move on to this visual aid. Here's a visual aid from Zero Hedge, and just to start off, give you an idea of, of just kind of trying to lay this out. This is from a infographic that is at the bottom of this particular link that you can look at. That gives you even more 
of a visual aid because it's real detailed and things like that. But just to give you an idea here, it says the United States owes a lot of money. For now, there's no debt ceiling. It has been suspended. But in 10 days, that changes. Who knows what will happen then? Then it starts off with just basically giving you an idea of, of what a $100 bill looks like. So we can all kind of know what that looks like. So here's a $100 bill. It says 100 the most counterfeited money denomination in the world, keeps the world moving. And then the next one is $10,000. It's a stack of, you know, 100 ones, 100, 100, 100 bills. Yeah. So it says 10000 enough for a great vacation or to buy a used car. Then the next one is $1 million, and it's a stack of $100 bills and 10000 10, stacks. And then the next one here is $100 million. And so it shows a pallet with a stack of $100 bills, and then a young lady sitting on a couch that it says here is made up of, the couch is made up of $46.7 million of crispy $100 bills. And then the next one here, it says it's $100 million equals one year of work for 350 average Americans. So it shows you a, a pallet here in the middle, and then it shows you how many Americans are needed to work for one year to earn $100 million, average Americans. So nine to five, 15 dollars an hour type of, you know, I, I would assume. Then the next one, once you scroll down, it says here are 2,000 people standing shoulder to shoulder looking for a job. It says the Federal Reserve mandates to maintain price stability and low unemployment. The Federal Reserve prints money based on the assumption that increasing money supply will boost jobs. So that's the first that picture there. Then the next one here we have two, four, six, eight, ten pallets and the and the uh, forty-six point seven million dollar couch the young lady sitting on. And then it's a guy here standing right next to it just to show how tall it is. And it says this is one million. I'm sorry, one trillion. You need to come. Uh, you need some help with robbing the bank. <laughs> Interesting fact: one million dollar weighs ten kilograms exactly. You're looking at ten tons of money on those pallets. So, ten tons of money on those pallets. Interesting. And then we go here to. I'm sorry, that is one billion dollar. That's one billion. Oh man, I said one trillion. That's one billion dollar. So here we have one trillion dollars. So this is the actual image that you see uh, surrounding me, and it's. Uh, uh, one trillion is a sign. We have the White House here with you know the whole full shebang. We got a truck here. We got an airline jet there. We got the same young lady with a, on a couch and one pallet. But yeah, just to show you how much one trillion is, it says the U.S. Uh, federal deficit was 1.4, 1.412 trillion, 41% more than you see here. So 41% more than you see here is the is the deficit that uh, from 2011. It says if you spend one million a day since Jesus was born, you would have not spent one trillion by now. So let me repeat that: if you spend one million a day since Jesus was born, you have not spent one trillion by two by now. And that's you know 2,700 years ago according to biblical times. And so here, here's one trillion. Here's the aerial view of the visual that you see surrounding me now, and it just shows you how massive it is. We have a football field with a jet in it. We have the White House and you know the wings and whatnot and so here you have all this money here where it's just you know hundred dollar bills paper fiat currency just piled up equally one trillion dollars that's one trillion and so here we go we're about to go a little deeper into this and then it goes here it says comparison of one trillion dollars to a standard size american football field as you saw say hello to a born 747 so you can see the white house with both wings to the right it says, by my reading of history convinces me that the most bad government results from too much government. Quote from Thomas Jefferson. And then here you have the U.S. debt ceiling, $20 trillion, which is in 2017. So it won't even fit in the screen totally, but yet here's, what, you know, here's what, how it would pan out. And so we have you know these tall stacks here, and they just go back, and they go back even further to where you can see the Statue of Liberty in amazement at how much taller these hundred dollar crates are that herself and then we have a crane on top of a building transporting more carts into this maze of money then we have some two little trucks transporting you know the paper in it says 20 trillion u.s debt 2017 so just to give you an idea of how much debt that is in the form of hundred dollar bills it's unimaginable to me it's it's and to think about it, that's debt that's not like you know savings account that we have in in the bank where Net positive, we're worth more than we spend, type of thing. This is the fact. This is a, this is debt, money that can never be repaid. There's people, there's creditors, there's bondholders, there's people out there expecting 
to receive interest on this debt knowing that it won't be paid off but yet they still continue to you know lend which is you know another story within itself but yet this is what it looks like for 20 trillion dollars so want to take a million and then here's another one it says it's a national debt would be laid in a single bill of one dollar bills it would stretch from earth past uranus and it's 121 trillion dollars in single dollar bills so here we go just a visual aid we have the uh twin towers so this is an older graph and so here we got just you know how massive it is in one dollar bills that is unbelievable so this is what's happening in the news. Thought I would share this with you guys, a visual aid on what the national debt and the debt ceiling looks like in hundred dollar bills as well as as you can see here in dollar bills. And so this is what's approaching, you know, the debt ceiling and the thing is they're going to raise it or do something that's not going to be beneficial for me in the long run. And this all has to do with the dollar. This is all about, you know, rethinking the dollar, realizing that the money will never be repaid and then because it won't be repaid it's going to be inflated away more likely and that means what you're holding on to in the form of paper will purchase less and less and less and that means you're basically they're basically robbing and stealing from us right in front of our nose with this national debt and debt ceiling so just my thoughts uh let me know what you think leave a comment below i would love to hear your thoughts and also if you found us to be informative you know share the links here with the family and friends so they can see visually what what's going on and what this debt ceiling mean in hopes of them taking interest and you know preparing themselves for the day that this debt ceiling uh, comes to an end in a very unfortunate and un uncomfortable way so other than that hope all is well talk to you later